Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Anna Devi, Associate Professor, Department of ECE, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be University, Chennai. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic, analog integrated circuits. Get started. So first let us know what is integrated circuits or ICs. Integrated circuit is a miniature low cost electronic circuit consisting of active and passive components fabricated together on a single crystal of silicon. So what do you mean by active component? The electronic components which requires power supply for their operations of or active components. So some of the active components are transistors and diodes and passive components that doesn't require any power supply for its operation. So those are resistors and capacitor. So an integrated circuit consists of both active as well as passive components. In all electronic devices nowadays we are having integrated circuits. So what is the advantage of integrated circuits? First one is it is miniaturization and hence increased equipment density which means that large electronic circuits is consolidated into a smaller chip or IC. So it is called as miniaturization because of this miniaturization property you can fabricate more number of devices in an electronic circuit or in, in an electronic component. Second one is these ICs are manufactured in a batch process or a bulk process so obviously the cost of ICs will be reduced. Third process it is reliable when compared to normal connections these IC doesn't require any soldering joints so they are reliable obviously the functions are improved. Next one is it can be matched with any kind of devices. Next when you are using an IC the speed of the device will be obviously increased. Last one it consumes less power. So these are the advantages of IC which makes IC usable for most of the electronic appliances today. So next we are going to see about analog integrated circuits AIC. So what do you mean by analog integrated circuit? Analog integrated circuit is an electronic circuit which will be using analog signal or which operates with analog signal. So what do you mean by analog signal? The signal which are continuous with respect to time and voltage are called as analog signal. Most of the signals which are in nature will be analog in nature like audio, video, temperature, light, voltage, everything will be continuous throughout the time. So such kind of signals are called as analog signal. So our analog integrated circuits uses this or works with this analog signals. So this analog signals are used today in various fields such as audio, video, instrumentation engineering, medical electronics, so many applications are there for this analog integrated circuit. Important analog integrated circuit is operational amplifier. We will be discussing about that today. So this is our analog integrated circuits or operational amplifier. We simply call analog integrated circuit as operational amplifier. It comes in an IC form. IC number is IC741. So it is an integrated circuit that uses external power supply or external voltage to amplify the signal with high gain power. Normally we know what is an amplifier. Amplifier amplifies the signal or it increases the strength of the signal. right? But why do we call it as an operational amplifier in addition to amplification? This operational amplifier, amplifier performs some mathematical operations also. What are the mathematical operations it will be performing? It performs addition, subtraction, integration, differentiation, so many applications it will be performing. This is the pin diagram of our operational amplifier. So normally it will be available in 8 pins. Okay. So pin number 2 and pin number 3 are the input pins. So it has 2 input and 1 output because it, it, was, it will be performing mathematical operations. So for any mathematical operation we need at least 2 inputs. right? So we have 2 inputs, inverting input and non-inverting input. Pin number 1 and pin number 5 will be offset null and pin number 2 and 3, pin number 2 is inverting input, pin number 3 is called as non-inverting input and pin number 6 is the output. right? So we need to give power supply to this uh, integrated circuit. So what are the pin numbers for power supply are pin number 4 and pin number 7. Pin number 7 is positive power supply, pin number 4 is negative power supply and 8th pin is no connection. Okay, So this is uh, uh, the pin diagram of our operational amplifier. Now next one is power supply regarding power supply. So it has two inputs minus and plus, negative is uh, inverting input, positive is non-inverting input and it needs to be given plus VCC and minus VCC. The range of power supply varies between 5 voltage to 22 voltage. Generally, we will be using 15 voltage, right? So, plus 15 will be given to the 7th pin and minus 15 should be given to the negative or 4th pin. 
okay so lot of companies are manufacturing this uh, uh, operational amplifier or ic741 some of the major manufacturers are national semiconductor motorola rca texas instrument signetics so now we should know about the characteristics of uh, operational amplifier in general by default there are some uh, basic ideal operational amplifier characteristics so these are the five important characteristics of op amp what are they open loop gain is equal to infinity that is without feedback the gain is called as open loop gain the open loop gain a not l will be equal to infinity and operational amplifier has high input impedance the input impedance is infinity and it has low output impedance which will be equal to zero and bandwidth is infinity apart from that it has zero offset voltage that is if you are not giving any input voltage your output voltage will be zero that is if when v1 is equal to v2 is equal to zero v out also will be equal to zero okay in addition to that there will be three other characteristics also there the first one is an ideal op amp draws no input current at both the input terminals that is it doesn't take the input cu current from the input source next one is the difference between the inverting and non inverting terminal will be equal to zero that is vd is equal to v1 minus v2 v1 v2 are the inputs given to the inverting terminal and the non inverting terminal the difference between that will be equal to zero third one is the output voltage is independent of the current drawn from the output because r not is equal to zero thus the output can drive an infinite number of other devices so these are the characteristics of operational amplifier when we are sure about the characteristics of operational amplifier then only we can move on to the applications of operational amplifier so today we'll be discussing about three important applications like uh, inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier and differential amplifier so first one let us know about inverting amplifier an important and most widely used operational amplifier is inverting amplifier as we just now discussed it has two terminals negative and positive terminal negative terminal is called as inverting terminal if you are giving input to the negative terminal it is called as inverting amplifier it performs inversion of the signal it amplifies the signal as well as it inverts the phase right so i am giving the input to the inverting terminal and a feedback is given to make it as a closed loop so input is given via a resistor r1 the feedback resistor is rf you can connect a load resistance also at the time at the same time you should connect uh, ground the non inverting terminal so for an inverting terminal input is given only to the inverting terminal and non inverting terminal is grounded okay so this circuit let us see what is the gain of this inverting amplifier so this is the analysis of uh, inverting amplifier so first let us know what is i1 i1 is the nothing but the current which is flowing through the resistor r1 the current i1 through r1 is given by v1 by or input voltage vi by r1 right second step is uh, input current the current the op amp does not draw any input current so obviously the i1 current plus the feedback current will be equal to zero so if will be equal i1 plus if is equal to zero so if will be equal to minus i1 so now look at the uh, feedback loop the upper loop in that case what will, what will be the output voltage will be equal to if into rf right output voltage will be equal to if into rf in that case we just now discussed if is equal to minus i1 so v out is equal to minus i1 into rf which is i1 is nothing but if is equal to minus i1 so i1 into rf i1 is nothing but v1 by r1 so vi by r1 into rf so now we know the gain of any amplifier the gain is nothing but output voltage divided by input voltage so v out divided by vi is equal to minus rf by r1 so the gain of uh, inverting operational amplifier is minus rf by r1 which means that the output will be amplified by a factor of rf by r1 at the same time it is inverted the phase is inverted to show the inversion there is a minus sign okay so how much amplification you you want you can choose that by choosing the value of rf and r1 if you incre you should increase the value of rf at the same time you should decrease the value of r1 to achieve maximum gain so the same analysis can be done using nodal analysis also nodal equation also so let us assume that there is a node a right node a at node a va minus vi divided by r1 plus va minus that side is v0 divided by rf is equal to 0 so that is the nodal equation at node a in this case the nodal voltage va will be equal to 0 why we know that the differential voltage will be equal to 0 vd is equal to 0 that is the ideal characteristics of op amp and since the voltage in the non inverting terminal will be zero so the same voltage will be applied in the inverting terminal so since this is zero that also will be equal to zero so va will be equal to zero which means that minus vi by r1 plus 
V0 by Rf is equal to 0. So, in that case, if you find the gain, it will be equal to minus Rf by R1. So, the same uh, gain. So, the gain of the inverting amplifier will be minus Rf by R1. So, now, this is the waveform of our inverting amplifier. So, we are giving an input voltage, okay. The output voltage will be amplified by a factor of 2 because your gain here is 2. At the same time, the phase is inverted, which means that when you have the positive phase in your input, the output will be negative. So, output will be uh, inverted as well as it will be amplified. Next type of amplifier is non-inverting amplifier. Uh, this is the circuit diagram of non-inverting amplifier. In this amplifier, we should give the input to the non-inverting terminal, that is plus terminal we should give. At the time, you should ground the inverting terminal. So, grounding directly we cannot ground the inverting terminal because there will be a feedback loop. So, there will be some voltage associated with that directly we cannot ground. So, we should ground that with the help of R1 resistor. So, now if you see here you are giving input to the non-inverting terminal. So, only this amplifier is called as non-inverting amplifier. So, now let us analyze about this uh, non-inverting amplifier. So, here uh, let us term this voltage, which voltage is the nodal voltage Va, let us term it as Vi. Now, I want to know what is the voltage Vi. So, to find the voltage Vi, we should use potential division rule because there is one main voltage V0 there which is shared between two resistors Rf and Ri. So, the voltage across this R1 is given by total voltage V0 divided by opposite resistor R1 divided by sum of the two resistors. There are two resistors R1 plus Rf. So, now the voltage across this Vi will be equal to output voltage V0 multiplied by opposite resistor divided by sum of the two resistors R1 plus Rf. So, I want to know the gain. So, V0 by Vi will be equal to R1 plus Rf divided by R1. So, it is nothing but 1 plus Rf by R1. This is the gain of your non-inverting amplifier. So, gain of non-inverting amplifier is 1 plus Rf by R1. And if you want to make it as unity, you can properly choose the value of Rf by Ri. So, this is the waveform of our non-inverting amplifier. The input will be amplified. At the same time, there will be no phase shift. The same phase shift, zero phase shift will be maintained between input and output voltage. So, now we have seen about inverting and non-inverting amplifier. In inverting amplifier, we have given the input to only to the inverting terminal. In the non-inverting amplifier, we have given the input only to the non-inverting terminal. Now, what will happen if both the inputs are given at the same time? So, if both the inputs are given at the same time, the amplifier performs a subtraction operation, which means that look at the circuit. This is the circuit of a differential amplifier in which two inputs are given parallelly at the same time. So, here uh, the inverting terminal is given V2 and the non-inverting terminal you are giving a voltage called V1 and there will be a feedback input voltage, input resistance will be there. Here you have a ground resistor, right. So, now let us analyze this circuit. So, if you are giving both the inputs at the same time, the operational amplifier receives the two input, subtracts or find the difference between the two signals, amplify the difference and it will be giving. So, it is a type of subtractor. You can call this differential amplifier also as a subtractor circuit. So, differential amplifier is a type of subtractor. So, now let us analyze the uh, differential amplifier. So, first let us find the nodal voltage at node A. So, nodal voltage at node A, let me term the voltage at A will be V3. So, V3 minus V2 divided by Ri or R1 plus V3 minus V0 divided by R2 which will be equal to 0. Second at node B, okay, the same voltage we are assuming, let it be V3. So, V3 minus V1 plus V3 minus 0 because it is grounded divided by R2 is equal to 0, right. Let us rearrange the first equation, it will be 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 into V3 minus V2 by R1 is equal to V0 by R2. Let us rearrange the second equation, it becomes 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 into V3 minus V1 by R1 is equal to 0. So, if you just subtract the two equations, you will be getting 1 by R1 into V1 minus V2 is equal to V0 by R2. So, V0 is equal to R2 by R1 into V1 minus V2. So, your output voltage is nothing but difference between the two input voltage multiplied by R2 by R1, which means that this differential amplifier subtracts the two input voltage V1 and V2, then it amplifies by a factor of R2 by R1. So, by properly choosing or by choosing the value of R2 by R1 based on the amplification need, you can achieve your desired amplification, okay. 
This kind of differential amplifier will be useful when this difference between the signals are very small. If it cannot be measured, in that case you can go for a differential amplifier. You can find the difference between the two signals, amplify that and you can be used for any applications. Okay? So, in this case let us assume if R2 is equal to 100 times R1, then the smaller signal can be amplified by a factor of 100. Okay? So, this is called as differential amplifier. So, in this video we have understood the basic operation of an operational amplifier, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier and differential amplifier. Thank you. Happy learning.